Hey everyone, welcome to an episode of Chronic Low Effort Content. Apparently a couple of people think I look like porno actor Darby El Ninjo Pola. Probably butchered his name there, but you know what? I don't care. Being a porn star, he's got no right to complain about serious creators like me pronouncing his name incorrectly. So yeah, I'll leave that up to you down in the comments to decide whether I look like him or not. Please don't tell me I look like him. I mean, I maybe get that in the first two videos where I, my lighting was bad, my hair looked blacker than it actually is, and I was awkward on camera. I mean, I maybe kind of get that I looked a little bit like him in those first videos, but generally, nah, not really. Either case, I can assure you that I am not Jordy. My name is Benjamin, and while I am sure Jordy is very good at laying pipe, I am also quite sure that he is not good at doing what I do. So, yeah. Anyway, today we're not here to talk about plumbing, but actually to take a closer look at the CAD model of my soon-to-be-built DIY 3D printer using unipolar stepper motors. Yes, we're gonna take a closer look, discuss some of the design choices I made, talk about things you generally need to consider when designing a 3D printer or similar CNC out of more natural materials like engineered wood. And lastly, I already have a couple of things I want to change about the design again, so while we're at it, we're just gonna do that as well. And as much as I just sounded like a pro saying this, keep in mind, take everything I say with a grain of salt. It's only at the end of this series that we're gonna find out which was truth and what was fiction. Because this is still only the very first 3D printer I ever designed. Oh, and before we jump into it, I need to apologize for the illegally low frame rate of my screen recording. I did download a more professional screen recording tool, however it seems like my computer is just not powerful enough to record 1080p at 30fps. So you guys will just have to watch more of my videos so I got enough ad revenue to buy a proper computer. It's on you guys. Anyway, to quickly get you up to speed, this is still version 0.9 we're currently at right now. Look over here, we have the other three versions. It's still very much a prototype, and keep in mind, version 0.9 is only designed around all the components I have at hand, so if you want to build this 3D printer as well, you will need to modify it to fit your components, because it is just a prototype. This is version 0.8, here we have version 0.85, and finally, this is version 0.9. Yes, I don't know if you noticed, but on my thumbnail, I actually used version... <laughs> I actually used version 0.85 because it looks a little bit better. Anyway, fun fact. Version 0.9 is going to be made out of Baltic birch plywood as well as MDF. The two main materials, then we have aluminum and other stuff as well, but generally the gantry itself is mostly just Baltic birch, plywood and MDF. And the first thing you should notice, let me just get rid of this, the first thing you should notice looking at this is that all of the cross members are all made of MDF. And there is a reason for this, because generally if you design things, never, 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 ever glue things like plywood and MDF or any other two different materials on top of each other because for sure they are going to bend as soon as humidity changes, just like a bimetallic strip. So here this thing applies as well, except that it's not things that are glued together, it's things that are in the same on the same axis. So for all the cross members I tried to use MDF as much as possible. If you look down here, we have MDF, we have MDF, MDF. The print bait itself is made out of MDF, and this is made of MDF, and up here it's MDF as well. So when humidity changes, all MDF parts are going to expand and contract at the very same rate, so the entire printer is obviously going to expand and contract, but that doesn't matter as long as all the parts going in the same direction are made out of MDF. Now a little exception here is actually the x-axis rail. There is no way I could make this out of MDF simply because it's not stiff enough. I have to use Baltic birch plywood for the x-axis rail. MDF would not be good enough. 
but I think it's okay because we should have a little bit of give in these roller bearings down here and over there. There should be at least a few tenths of a millimeter in give before it starts to bend the entire gantry, so it should work. I don't see any reason for it not working. And obviously the print bit, as you can see, the frame for the print bit is made of MDF, so it's going to expand at the very same rate as the frame down here itself. So when the aluminum rails go further apart because of changes in humidity, the bearings on the print bit are also going to go further apart, so things should stay more or less the same. Yes, that is one of the most important things here. Then the next part is, yes, the aluminum rails themselves. Now, fixing the aluminum rails on the gantry, it's actually quite a difficult topic because, let me just get rid of this. Um, if you look at this, I decided upon these dados lengthwise where the aluminum V-rail is going to be slid in, and that is because, at the beginning I didn't think very much about that, simply because, yes, I had more difficult things to think about, but if you look at my very first version, it's version point 8, I just thought I'm going to cut this little profile on the edge of the Baltic Birch plywood rail, I'm just gonna cut this little profile and glue these aluminum rails on, but there is a problem. Now, you could uh, either attach the aluminum rails with glue, but that would be permanent. And also, which glue are you going to use? Uh, you could just use epoxy, really. And the problem is, if then I have a little problem and these rails are not entirely parallel, yeah, my aluminum V-rail is going to be ruined by having it permanently glued to these rails. By having them removable, I can still at least slide them out if I have to and modify the rail itself a little bit, I mean the wooden rail. So gluing is not really an option, it's not a good idea. Then you could screw them on, that would mean... Let me just show you something. Let's just pretend this is my aluminum angle sock like I'm going to use to get a hardened surface for the rollers to roll on, and I want to screw it onto a similar surface of the wood, so I would probably very likely, first of all, drill the holes somewhere down here where the where the V-groove rollers don't roll. I would drill them down here, and on top of that, to get an even distribution of the screws, I would need to drill here, 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 here. However, on the other side, since I can't drill one screw into the other, it would need to be offset by about half that, so I would have the screws kind of like in zigzag, one screw here, 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 and one screw here, and one screw here. However, the problem with that is that Obviously, since every piece of wood is a tiny little bit squishy, even Baltic birch plywood, and the aluminum rail is the cheapest and thinnest one I could find at my local hardware store, so obviously if I start screwing in screws, at the location of the screw, the aluminum is going to be very slightly squeezed into the wood, or at least touch the wood a little more snugly than on every spot where there's no screw. So. The end result is your linear rail is going to be a zigzag. So that's why I can screw them on and I don't see any easier way of screwing it on. No way without getting a, either a zigzag or some other wavy thing where the rail starts going up and down because if it's not fastened here but there are screws here and here, it's going to be, it's going to be pulled down on those both sides, but in the middle it's going to stick up a little bit. It, it just sucks. So what I decided to do instead was to just cut a dovetail shaped dado into the edge of the plywood, so then I can just slide in the aluminum rail, and if something goes wrong, I can even take it out again, or I can put little shims in here between the aluminum and the wood, it's just gonna have to be a little tight so there's a good friction fit. I don't need to glue anything, I don't need to screw anything, it'll be hopefully very good. And also, if there's pressure onto the edges of the aluminum rail, like from here and here, if you press in from both sides, 
it's just going to make the L shape of the aluminum rail expand and fit more tightly into the thing. It's, it's not gonna slide around, I think. It's gonna be good, I hope. Anyway, yes, that is everything I have to say about the aluminum rails. Then, holy shit, I just finished editing this first bit and it's already crossed the 10 minute mark, even though I haven't covered half of what I wanted to cover. And I wanted to keep this video short at under 15 minutes. Apparently I'm incapable of explaining stuff quickly and efficiently. Oh well, I'll catch you later in the next one to finish what I started.